Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I have an open kit boxing, or unboxing I should say, of the brand new Tamiya 170 second scale F35A. Now the F35A has been released before by Tamiya but in 1 to 48 scale. So this is a smaller kit, it's based on the same data that they've um, uh, created for the larger kit. So we would expect this to be just as sharp as a larger kit, but this has been uh, made with half the number of parts, so it'll be a quicker build and also it'll be a bit more compact build, particularly for people with limited space. So let's have a closer look at the box art. There we go, it's very similar to the 40X scale one actually. It shows two angles, so you can see the, the underside detail. These are both showing the full beast mode, which is uh, full underwing pylons. So you've got um, uh, anti-aircraft sidewinders and then pave uh, laser guided bombs as well. So there's three configurations you can set up the, uh, the armament and we'll check through that in the instructions in just a moment. Other features are the canopy which is going to be open and closed. And just some really good surface detail. Let's have a look inside. So here we go. As you can see, much smaller box, much more compact components, but sort of similar in the way that the kit is actually split. So you have the top of the fuselage here. Now the parts to take um, close attention to is mainly the surface detail. So it's all the, um, the raised detail. There's not really any panel lines on these because they're reduced to panel lines to be a stealth aircraft. But it does have those jagged edges, which are the, uh, uh, what are they, the radar uh, reducing um, shapes to make it more stealth. Now let's get a closer zoom in on that. So let me just focus that. Okay. If I can get the reflections right, you'll be able to see all these surface details. You see all those jagged, jagged edges. And then towards the back here, see the slots there to take the vertical stabilizers. You have the jet exhaust at this point, the nozzle. And then going towards the front was a cockpit. Okay, so split straight down the center. And that'll give you the least amount of uh, seam lines. So the interior here. So what you will need to pay attention, uh, there are a couple of points here. So you will need to open up those location holes if you use the optional parts and therefore the um, radar, what do they call it again? Radar intensifying thingamabobs. So they're there to increase the signature so it's less stealth so I can fly with regular air traffic during our training missions and such. But in combat mode, it'll be smooth just like this, so you won't need to open those up. Okay, so there's the top of the fuselage. Let's get into the bottom. Okay, I might as well keep it tight. You can see just how gentle and subtle all those details are. But they're there. I mean, it is quite a small kit. And on some of the bigger F-35s that were released earlier, such as the main ones, people did um, criticize all these details for being too pronounced. But you can see how you can see those in the shadow of the lighting. So that means usually they'll be quite hidden once you spray your flat base coats on it, but with a little bit of um, a wash, like a darker gray wash, they'll be accentuated very nicely and not look out of scale. Got those nice bulges there. So these are the bulges which would normally cover the internal stores. And you see how on the smaller kit, they've actually had them fully sealed here. On the 48 scale, you have the option of having them open or closed. And then on the inside, you do have quite a variety of location holes that need to be opened if you want to do it in, say, air to air mode, which would be the outer wings. That'll be for the uh, sidewinders. And then these inner pylons would be for the laser guided bombs. 
So if you want to do beast mode, you'll need to remember to open those because trying to find those after you've glued the two halves together would be nigh impossible. And a couple more holes there, again for the uh, radar signature intensifier thinger, which I just made up, which I will check in the instructions because they'll tell me exactly what they're called. But in combat mode, it'll be smooth like this to be full stealth. Okay, so that's the bottom of the fuselage. You can see there. Beautifully molded. Okay, now we start moving on to some bigger sprues. All right, what do we have here? We've got um, some side panels. You've got your vertical stabilizers, horizontal stabilizers, um, undercarriage doors. You have part of the cockpit there. There's a cockpit tub. I'll get in tighter there in a sec. You've got the nozzle and there's really fine teeth type details there. Undercarriage and framework for the cockpit, which is super fine. So let me just get tight in there. Let's see, let's look at the cockpit first. You can imagine 70 second scale cockpits are pretty tight. Quite a lot of detail molded there already. So you can see the location point for the ejection seat right in the center. You have your instrument panel that'll be sitting across the top here. There's a framework for the canopy. Super fine. And you can see there, there's the tongue on how it gets mounted in there. So you can have that mounted open or closed. You've got vents there for the air intake for the engine. There's a turbine, blades there. They're really sharp. I think you can see some really fine details just on these control surfaces as well. Like so. We've got the undercarriage doors. Across here as well. Nice gentle shapes. And here's the nozzle parts where I was talking about the teeth. You see how fine that is? Remarkable. Very nice. And there's the nozzle itself. And on this side, you might just see the teeth there as well. Really fine. Let's see if we can get that right. Might be able to just see them there. There we go. So beautiful. And you know, this is as we expect from Tamir. Really nice moldings. For an enjoyable build. All right, what do we got next? All right, we've got some pylons. So these look like identical sprues. We do have two sprues here. Oh, they sort of lock together. How are they held together here? Just like so. All right, so I've got two sprues there. So we've got the main undercarriage wheels. We've got pylons for the beast mode. And so there'll be various parts for the pylons. And we've got the laser guided bombs. And also the sidewinder. So I'll move that out of the way. All right, so there's a the detail on the main landing wheels. Got the pylons, you can see there's panel line detail on those. Really nice. I think I've got the angle just right there. These are the actual location points. These are the anchor points into the wing. So there's three locating points. You've got your laser guided bomb there. So there's the other side of it there. And then we've got the Sidewinder anti-aircraft. Okay, so there's those two parts. Let's leave those this side. And then we've got the clear bits. Can be really hard to see but it's clever how something this small in 70 second scale you usually don't see a separate framework for it super polished you can see straight through that very clear and then we've got the covers there for some of the uh this would be for the uh weapons guidance systems which is actually on the chin and then these are perhaps some navigation type lights or lenses. 
and this little part here may be for part of the cockpit the instrument panel okay let's pop that away put it back in the bag so we don't scratch it there we go all right and then we're left with this is the final sprue of parts got some chunky bits and pieces we've got the the wing tips we've got the bottom of the I guess that's a cockpit area this is actually the front undercarriage bay so that's actually upside down we'll be sitting like this normally and you have the cockpit sitting in here we have the main undercarriage bulkhead and this is a very similar design to the 48 scale one so this is actually holding um, the two halves together and acting as a strength bulkhead got a pilot and I'll think from here let's zoom in You can see the really fine surface details there too. The reflection's right. There we go. So every one of these large panels, even though they don't have a lot of actual panel lines, they do have a lot of surface detail. Even with these slats, there's actually lines there if I can get the reflection right. Here's the undercarriage bay. See all that moulding in there? It's not particularly big as you can see by the size of my finger here. You've got undercarriage legs here, so front and main undercarriage. And then we've got some bulkhead larger parts. And there is the pilot's head. Right here. And the pilot's body. Where is arms? Arms over here. And then we've got parts for the injection seat. These are the two sides, the rails are actually upside down, so they'll be like this. There's a cushion. And then there's that large bulkhead I talked about that will house the main undercarriage. You can see how the engine bay sort of, the engine will be sitting between the, the undercarriage legs there. We've got the cover for the instrument panel. And then some other little bits and pieces. You can see how tiny they are. There's my finger there. Okay, so that's all the plastic. Now let's go and have a look at some of the documentation. Here's the manual. Looks like a typical Tamiya manual. We've got the paint list here with all the Tamiya paint codes. Recommended tools on the bottom. Okay, let's get into the actual building. I need to zoom out a bit for that. Got it all in there. There we go. Move that. Okay, so we start off with step one, which is the upper fuselage. So you need to pay uh, quite a bit of attention here because this is where you need to decide whether or not you want to put in those, um, what are they calling here? The RCS, Radar Cross Section Enhancers. So these are affixed during basic training exercises, but not in live action or more complex exercises. So if you do want to use them, which are these little, two little duvalaki things here, you need to open up those location holes. So there's some basic assembly there on the top fuselage and then we get into creating the cockpit and then that's attached to the top of the fuselage front undercarriage and the undercarriage bay that's connected to the two halves of the the front of the uh, aircraft so sub assembly and then we have the intake tunnels and then that as a whole sub assembly is mounted into the top of the fuselage then we have that large bulkhead which is the undercarriage the main undercarriage and we get to the point here where you need to decide which version of the armament uh, that you want to fit so which ordnance pad so there's stealth mode which doesn't have anything under the wings air to air mode which has got the sidewinders on the tips of the the wings or you've got full beast mode which is two sidewinders and the laser guided bombs so you've got a b or c and you'll need to follow which holes which I'll correspond with that need to be opened up and again in the center there this is where you can choose whether or not you want to fix the RCS which is the radar cross-section enhancers but military or um, uh, deployment mode you don't need those and keep it totally smooth okay so here we're attaching some various bits and pieces to 
the lower fuselage. The bulkhead section or the undercarriage bay that is glued in and then the top is glued together. So that's going to reduce chances of any splitting across the fuselage halves because as you crush this, it's actually supported with this bulkhead, the top and the bottom. Next we get into the, um, the jet engine tube. We've got the nozzle out here and that just slides inside. Main undercarriage, the wheels and the undercarriage legs. You've got the bay doors. They're getting fitted into the fuselage as the doors fitting in. You've got the front. So you can either have... Uh, no, actually, this assembles very much like the 48 scale one, where the main undercarriage uh, for the front is laid down, and then you snip off a section so you can actually be deployed. Next we've got the, uh, the gear bay doors, the cover, which is the clear part for the guidance system for the weaponry. We've got some flaps. So more here. We've got your horizontal stabilizers. Here's your ordnance getting put together. So if you do choose your ordnance, this is where you need to put together the sidewinders or the laser guided bombs, pylons. These are laser guided bombs getting mounted up, so there's full beast mode. Then we've got the vertical stabilizers, they just slide in place. And then we finish up with the cockpit. So this builds very much like the 48 scale one, where the cockpit installation, or the seat as such, and the pilot, goes in last. Quite a lot of these um, builds for aircraft, traditionally you build the cockpit first because it gets in enclosed. There's a pilot, all mounted up, so you can choose to have a pilot or not. And then you've got options for the open canopy and the closed canopy. So we've got the sun visor for the instrument panel going in. Here's the canopy here with the framework going inside. And that's cut off if you want it closed. And then you leave the tab on it if you want it open. And there we go. So that's the assembly of the F-35. There is some more documentation here, so there is this guide here, which is a colour guide on the different uh, versions that you get. There's three different versions, there's an American version and two Japanese versions. And they're low vis, so they don't have anything really bright on them, but there is a lot of uh, stenciling. Okay, so that's the American one, as you can see from the American uh, ensign. And then you've got the Japanese ones, which has got the low vis rising sun. Okay, so what else we got? We've got the decals and such. So here we go, we've got decals. On the back here you can see the masks. So window masks, which are very helpful. Even though it is a really small kit, really curved window, window masks are, are really hard to mask up. So you can see there are multiple pieces that go over the curves. Here's the decals, so let's have a quick look. Alright, so I've already got it zoomed in. What have we got here? So here's the American markings, as you can see here, USAF. And the generic Japanese markings. And then the rest of it are generic stenciling. And there's a lot of it. And consider that this is a small kit, 70 second scale. You get your really tiny ones down here too. So these are for the laser guided bomb. So all that just for four laser guided bombs. And these ones are for the sidewinders. And if I zoom out, you'll see just how big the sheet is. So fairly big sheet indeed. All right, so there we go. That is my box review. Brand new Tamiya, one the 70 second scale, F-35A Lightning II. So not quite as, um, I guess, would you call it detailed? Because it's got less parts and it's smaller, but it does have some really nice surface detail and it will build into a really nice kit. And you can see how clean all the parts are. It'll give you a very nice experience indeed. But if you do want something a bit more complicated, try out the 48 scale. So I do have an open boxing on for that one too. So there we go. If you enjoyed this review, please consider subscribing and please let me know if there's anything you'd like to see 
or if you have questions about this particular video. So thank you for watching.